like to, please subscribe. It helps me out a lot. I post every Wednesday. Hey everyone, my name is Catherine and welcome to my channel. Today I wanted to talk about Columbia with EF Ultimate Break and give you all an in-depth review about the trip as I went on it earlier this year and also just posted several different videos of my time there while I'm actually in the country. So go ahead and check those out if you haven't already. I know when booking a trip, it can be quite the investment with time and money and not knowing what it'll be like when you book it because you only get so much information on the website so I wanted to go over my experience in Colombia and let you all know what I did and also things that I learned or wish I had done. I have notes on my phone and I'm also going to be looking at photos that I took along the trip so I remember everything so that's why I may be looking down at my phone. The trip itself is comprised of going to three different cities. There's Bogota, Medellin, and Cartagena. Starting out in Bogota, that is the capital of Colombia with about 11 million people living there out of the 50 or so million people in the country. So a little more than one out of five people in all of Colombia live in Bogota. So as you can imagine, it is a large city. It's very sprawled out and it is absolutely beautiful. I would say that this was a good starting point. Of course, this is where the international airport is. I think everyone's least favorite city was Bogota. So it's kind of nice that you start there and then you kind of have more to look forward to and I only say that because it gives off like a typical just major city a lot of times when people travel they want to see the more unique and cultural parts to a country it is the third highest city in the world and what I mean by that is altitude wise it's pretty high up so I will say that it may take a little bit of time to acclimate and adjust to just the thinner air and being up so high you can take altitude sickness medication if you you want. Nobody I don't think on my trip did that. I didn't. But just know that it takes a little bit of time to adjust and to just listen to your body and honor it and not push yourself too hard. Looking at the map, we spent three nights in every single city. So in Bogota, we spent three nights there. The first day you get there, I got there pretty late. My flight was also delayed. So I got in at around 10 p.m. and I just went to the hotel and rested given that I'd flown from the U.S. It was quite the day. And so that was the first night. And then the second day we had a city tour to get acquainted with the city. We got to go up to the top of a mountain essentially and just see beautiful views of just the sprawling city and how widespread it is. But you could only see like 60 to 80% of the city because that's just how widespread it is. But it was absolutely beautiful to be up there, see the views. There is a church up there that's still running and there was a service going on at the time when we went and seeing all the beautiful flora and flora. It was just a great way to introduce ourselves to the city and we got to take this really cool like side car kind of a situation up the really steep mountain. You can walk it, but it's pretty intense. And especially after getting to the country the night before with the EF, you just take the popular option, which is taking the sidecar up. And our day was actually a little bit flipped around because it was really busy. I believe we were there on a Sunday. And so it just took a really long time to get back down the mountain with the lines to get to the car. And so instead of going to a museum, we ended up later going to just do basically like another city tour but within Old Town. If your situation's a bit different and you aren't running super late because it's on a weekend when you start your tour, you might end up going to the museum. But with my experience, we got to walk around Old Town. It was really good weather this day and we really did love it. We got to see all these beautiful alleyways with beautiful paintings. People were also painting on the floor as well and it was absolutely incredible. There was a lot of different like like side carts that were selling things. So we got to try different fruits. We got to try like special drinks that are known in Colombia, just on the little, in the little side carts. So that was really amazing. And everyone was pretty happy with how it turned out. I will say though, I've noticed it generally in Latin America, but since we're talking about Colombia, I noticed in Colombia, one thing that kept happening, and I don't know if there's a way you can avoid it necessarily, but it was just a frustration. And it was that my tour guide would tell us, hey, you have an hour for lunch and meet here at, I don't know, 
2 p.m. and she would give us recommendations and then we'd go to these restaurants immediately, we would get seated, we would order pretty quickly and it would take nearly the entire hour to get our food. In that part of the world, they're not as fast paced as the US and in restaurants, even if it's not that busy, it just takes a long time for food to come out. So we were constantly just scrambling to make it back on time. And because it's a tour, everything is run like a well-oiled machine and you have to leave at a certain time and there's not much leeway room because there's another thing booked like immediately after. And it's just, it gets kind of tricky and complicated. And that was something that was frustrating because the first day we sat down and we got our food I'm not kidding the moment the minute that it turned like I forgot if it was 1 p.m. we were meeting at 2 p.m. but the minute we were supposed to meet the group is when we got our food so there's no time to eat it and then there were other times where we got it like five to ten minutes before and then our tour guide would get mad at us but we tried our best like what else could we do and especially when we went to restaurants that the tour guide recommended so that can be a bit tricky it was just the whole thing but yeah that's just one thing that I noticed but basically the whole day we just did a lot of different tours around the city and got well acquainted with it and then that evening we went and had our welcome Welcome dinner there will always be an included welcome dinner and farewell dinner with every EF tour and this welcome dinner was pretty cool we went to this multi-story restaurant and it was pretty much a party we were eating we got multiple courses with traditional Colombian food I remember ordering looking at it now it basically was like a soup chili almost dish or soup type dish that had like potatoes in it and then on the side there was rice different types of meats and avocado and that was pretty good and then there's like a conga line at one point there were performers at one point people in my tour group joined the conga line so it was a fun vibe it wasn't like a nightclub per se but it was definitely more than just a sit-down restaurant it was kind of like something in between i would say the first day was a city day and then the second day, so we had two full days, we went out into a park. So we went to Parque Natural Chicake or Chicake Natural Park. And that was really cool to be able to do that. It was a bit further of a drive, so we woke up early. And then we were able to take these cool Jeeps down. Now I remember this day, we were really stuck in traffic. Like it was much worse than usual because there was a pretty serious accident that had happened on the freeway. So we were supposed to hike like this entire portion, but we got driven by the Jeeps down to where cars could no longer go and then hike the rest of the way. And I'm actually glad that happened because otherwise that would have been such an intense hike, especially while still acclimating to the altitude and time zone, or maybe not so much time zone because it's South America, but just traveling like two days prior. But it was a gorgeous park. I loved being able to have a day just out in nature. We were able to then go and have lunch in this beautiful, what felt like a log cabin in the middle of the woods. And we were able to see llamas there too. I'm not sure if they were wild or domestic, but it was incredible. There was horseback riding tours. We didn't go on it, but I saw people riding on horseback. And then we separated in two different groups. It was just to make it easier to be able to zip line. So the first group went up to zip line and then us, the second, group we kind of waited around and walked around in the park area and then we switched and we basically did like another hike to go up to the zip line and it was only like one zip line but it was still pretty cool and I love being able to zip line whenever that is an option so I really loved this day and there was also another building that was essentially like the entrance to the park and in there it felt like such Christmas vibes and it was I think July at the time and it also was cooler at the time well depending which city I can get into that but Bogota for me I'm from Seattle so like Seattle in like fall and early winter is definitely cooler weather which I personally really liked in this building that looked like such Christmas vibes you could get something that is local to Colombia which is hot chocolate and cheese and you basically like put like it almost felt like bits of string cheese and you put it in the hot chocolate and drink it together it didn't quite melt which would have been nice but it still tasted pretty good it just was very different but I think the hot chocolate really cemented the Christmas feeling and I love Christmas so I wasn't complaining and then that evening there was an optional excursion to play Tejos and also 
drink beer and I don't drink but I played Tejos and my tour guide was nice enough to get me a non-alcoholic drink just because I technically paid for the whole excursion and that includes the beer so she got me a non-alcoholic drink instead and Tejos is this game local to the area what you do is you throw a stone and there's these little triangles against like a clay board if the stone hits one of the triangles or multiple it literally explodes like a mini firecracker EF says it's safe I mean we weren't like standing right by it so that was pretty cool and I always love going to the excursions unless it's something I'm completely just wouldn't enjoy. I generally like to book them. That was my time in Bogota and then next was flying to Medellin and we flew to each place within Colombia because of the way that the landscape is. It's very mountainous. My tour guide was saying if we were to drive we'd have to drive along the mountain and around the mountain range and I don't even know but it would take 16 hours to drive from Bogota to Medellin whereas being able to just fly over it would take an hour. So we flew and as we got there we started our day because we had our earlier in the morning flight and we got to have another city tour we got to see some pretty funky looking statues my tour guide she is from Colombia but she's from Cartagena specifically and sometimes you will have a additional tour guide that is specific to the exact city you're in in addition to your EF tour guide so in Bogota it was just my tour guide Belkin but in Medellin we had my EF tour guide and then we also had a local tour guide so we had two people for that city which is pretty cool and Medellin is also in just a very like hilly and mountainous area which makes it difficult to get around especially with the metro so they decided for part of the metro to basically have gondolas and I thought that was the coolest thing it's not like a special tourist attraction and extra cost it's like no this is how the locals use the metro and how they get from point A to point B and it was so fun to just ride the gondola it was the coolest metro I've ever seen and then afterwards we ended up going to what was known to be the most dangerous neighborhood in the 80s and Colombia has its stereotypes I felt really safe the whole time I mean I was in a tour group but I just got to see the culture and the colors and I keep saying that but it's just like such a beautiful place and everyone loved Medellin. It was actually most everyone's favorite city. When we went to this neighborhood that's been completely transformed and now it's a popular tourist attraction, that was one of the most favorite things that people said on my tour just because it is what they think of when they think of Colombia. There were lots of little alleyways, there were lots of food places to try, there was a lot of people there, there was dancing, there was music, and it was so cool. We got to see this dancing group and they even pulled some of us in for a dance and then we got to see and learn more about the area and what helped transform it from how it was to now and a lot of it is there was this set of escalators in this neighborhood specifically or the metro just different technological advances that helped really change things for Medellin and make it much safer there's a saying that's something along the lines of be kind like the way that we are to our metro because it's just so clean it feels so safe and well taken care of it's really cool so we were able to do that I even got to try out graffiti a little bit the next day we ended up walking up 700 steps in Guatape in this rock and it's just such an interesting looking just it's a rock with like all these steps going up so we did that got a workout in I always joke it's leg day every day at EF that was pretty cool and then afterwards we were able to do a speedboat excursion and we got to see a lot of cool houses along the shoreline like a famous soccer players mansion and then some other things as well we were able to have the boat take us more in the city of Guadalupe which is known again for colorful buildings there's this alleyway or this street that has the umbrellas above that you see all over Instagram and social media when it comes to Colombia and we got to do a lot of photos and also just do souvenir shopping and that was pretty cool and then the next day was essentially a free day but even on free days with EF there will be a schedule where either you have pre-excursions you can pre-buy so your free day you have stuff planned or it's a free day and there aren't optional excursions but then you're 
your tour guide will give options. Like when I was in Japan, there was a free day and my tour guide was saying, hey, if anyone wants to, I'm going to be going to the bamboo forest and I'm going to be going to this fish market. And so we just followed and did that. But here for this free day in Medellin, there is an option to go to a coffee plantation and to go white water rafting. And I signed up. I'm not the biggest coffee drinker, but I wanted to check out this place and get coffee for friends and family that like coffee. And I was also really excited to do white water rafting. So we were able to do that and we started out with coffee and I did try a little bit of coffee and it wasn't too bad, honestly. I think in general in Colombia, but especially I think in this coffee plantation, I didn't realize until later that day when someone pointed it out, I got eaten alive by bugs. So make sure you use your bug spray and just be really careful. So we did that. We did the white water rafting. Lunch was included. It was like out of this leaf, which was really cool. I felt very just like authentic and like living in nature that day. And then we flew to Cartagena the next day, which was the hottest climate I've ever been in my life. I'm not kidding. It was so hot and humid. And I think that's the main reason why Medellin was my favorite, although Cartagena was beautiful. Honestly, my favorite day, which I'll talk about, was in Cartagena. I struggled with the heat, but people say it looks like Miami and gives off Miami vibes. And I'll, I'll agree. I think a lot of like the architecture of the buildings and given that it's like, you know, Latin vibes and it's on the water and humid like Florida, it did remind me of Miami. We got there and we only really had time to do the sunset catamaran cruise and we got there straight from the airport so we had to dress in our clothing for the cruise at the airport which was interesting. We did that and then the next day we had another city tour classic you're getting the gist and my tour guide's from Cartagena so she was really giving us the tour of the city and was just hyping it up along the entire trip honestly and we went up like the city fort essentially that helped protect the city from like pirates and other people and places trying to take over and then there's the walled city of Cartagena which is like the number one thing to do for TripAdvisor with all these beautifully colored buildings and it was just beautiful and the alleyways and the colors and you're getting the gist and then we got to do an optional essentially you get to ride it's called a Chiva bus and it's basically a party bus and that was fun in the evening and then the next day we basically had a private yacht that took us to Baru Island. We got to go snorkeling. We got to have a whole fish for lunch and we got a private section of the island. It was incredible. And for the hot weather that it was, it was the perfect way to experience being in Cartagena. I love water. The snorkeling, the jumping into the water from the boat was amazing. That's kind of a quick overview because then afterwards we just flew home the following day. Just some tips for Colombia. So there, cash is king. I've noticed usually when you're abroad, a lot of places still use cash primarily and a lot of places only take cash. So just know that. I've kind of just learned and for Colombia, it's best to exchange once you're there, but don't do it at the airport. So you can wait till the first full day and your tour guide will show you the place where you can exchange your money to get the best conversion rate. People do speak English, but there can still be quite a bit of a barrier. But again, if you're in a tour group, it's not as big of an issue, but Google Maps and Google Translate will be your best friends. There's no visas required for US citizens, but there is some online stuff that you have to do. It's called like CheckMig or something like that. But again, if you're doing it through EF, they'll have it all in the know before you goes section and you will be shown what you have to to do ahead of time. Honestly, I think I went over most of the things as I went over the schedule with the tour. If you're worried about going to Colombia for whatever reason, safety-wise, I felt so safe with my group, whether I was with the tour guide or just separated with other people. I was never truly by myself. I was always with people in my tour group or with my tour guide, but I impulsively just got this trip because I really wanted to go to Peru and I wanted to just do two trips in a row because I have the time right now to be able to do that and Colombia be a fit best with a Peru trip with EF. I didn't know much about it and I ended up loving it. I made friends. I went solo. This was an ultimate plus trip. So we stayed in pretty nice hotels and it was just one roommate. So two people per room and it was incredible. I really, really recommend it. If you have any questions about Colombia, please let me know. And the weather, I was there in July. So it was technically their winter, but it kind of varied. So Botogaf, you could tell it was winter. Medellin was a bit warm 
warmer, but not that warm, and Cartagena was really warm. So just to be able to pack in layers and be prepped for that. I think honestly, for the most part, that is the trip and my review. I highly, highly recommend it. Thank you all so much for watching. I'll be posting my Peru videos soon, so stay tuned for those. Bye!